Hey guys, this is Shen. And I'm C. And I'm Susie. And welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. Before we start, here's a reminder that I'm doing a giveaway which will end on January 31st. And all the information will be in the description down below. And please subscribe to this channel. So today we will talk about a few Turkish urban legends. This is a new one. We've never done Turkey. Yeah, we have never done Turkey. I'm, I'm gonna be real. I don't know anything about Turkey. These are like a small amount, really small amount. They have urban legends like, you know, in Scotland, they have Loch Ness Monster. They have vampires, dragons, phoenix. This is all Scotland or Tur Turkey? No, no, Turkey. So they have um, a mixture of Greek urban legends because they came and conquered Turkey once, I guess. Like Greek mythological legends or urban legends, like modern day legends? Both. Their myth mythological legends and urban legends are kind of mixed, all mixed together. All the urban legends, all the myths, everything. I would say there's a lot of gray area then. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of gray area. <laughs> kind of like that one show, American God, you know, urban Norse mythology. Yeah. Kinda like that. They also have similar monsters or creatures, um, but different names. They do slightly different things and they do they look slightly different, but they do the same thing. Similar to what? Similar to each other. Like there are multiple vampire creatures or multiple jinns, multiple phoenix. Right, right. Just like you have like the Roman and Greek parallel, like you have basically the same pantheon with different names. You're you're gonna get the same legends but with different names different flavor yeah but it's just in turkey right yeah also basilisk is also apparently turkish but they also have it in greek myth what is the basilisk kind of like a, a derivative of the hydra what is the basilisk is it like a snake uh lizard snake something like that basilisk is hydra a basilisk is a hydra so what about the basilisk in harry potter isn't that just a snake yeah that's um, not really a snake. That's a monster that resembles snake. Isn't it one giant snake? What's the thing in the sewer that he, you know, skewers with a sword? One giant snake. Isn't that the basilisk? It's a monster that resembles snake. I mean, if it looks like a snake, slithers like a snake, and it's just a big snake, it's probably a snake. <laughs> okay. But that also comes apparently under Turkish urban legend, which is odd because it's all like some European urban legends are mixed with Turkish urban legends. That's why they have a lot of creatures. Okay, okay. Do they originate in Turkey? They don't say it. Ah, uh, okay. I'm interested. So the first one is called Hirtik. We call it Harry from now on. Meaning of this word is hurt in English or translate to hurt in English. Okay. It is believed to be in the shape of a human on the upper part and in the shape of an animal on the lower part. The body is covered with feathers and its feet are inverted like an evil genie creature. It's a feathery centaur. Did you guys know like in Islam it's believed that you can distinguish jinn and human by their feet because their feet are always turned backwards. Well, if I see that, I'll know what I'm looking at. Instead of being like, ah, God, you need to go to the hospital, I'll be like, ah, you're a genie. It usually lives in rivers, especially in Euphrates River in Elazig region. He disguises himself as a human, goes to the close friends or relatives of the person he disguised as, talk to them. In some variations of the story, this creature chooses to attack a group like a family. He kidnaps the youngest member with a sack and takes them to the forest. Then he drowns the youngest member, then eats the drowned body. So, okay, let, let me get the gist of the situation. It's disguising itself as a person that it has already drowned and then brings its friends and family to the place that it drowned the victim. No, 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 no. It disguises as a human and then goes to the person that human is related to and they just have a conversation and then picks them up, takes them to the riverbank and then drowns them to the point of killing them. But you said something about the youngest youngest member? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That in some variations of the story, uh, this creature chooses to attack a group like a family. He kidnaps the youngest member with a sack and takes them to the forest. Then he drowns the youngest member 
then eats the drowned body. Oh, okay, okay. Gross. He likes his food soggy. Does it not eat them in the other situation? No, I think it needs to be soaked. Right. No, but like it drowns victims, right? If the victim isn't the youngest in the family, does it not eat them? No, that's uh, another variation. It doesn't seem to be part of the main legend. Main legend is where he just drowns and kills them. Yeah, all right. The the variation the variation must have uh, originated because like, you know, parents trying to scare their children. Right. Yeah. Terrible parents. <laughs> Especially in the dark, the only way to avoid deception is to start a fire. People who suspect that the person they're talking to is a hirtik would start a fire which causes the hirtik to get a rash and experience fever around their body or burn their feet. This causes the hirtik to drop itself into the water and disappear, escaping with burnt feathers. Ah, so the, the whole trick is to kind of burn the feathery part of the creature. All right. Yeah, it's, I think his feathers are like, I don't know, like an essential part of um, him. So they're soaked in gasoline or something. <laughs> <laughs> like hurting his feathers is basically how you kill this dude. Dude? Is it a dude? No, I don't know. Could be a woman. <laughs> uh, women, women don't do this shit. So, so you, just, you just scare it. You just hope it's firephobic. It is also believed that the Hirtik disguises itself to trick and ride people's horses. It would ride them ragged during the night, leaving the poor animal exhausted and sweaty in the morning. To stop the mischievous trickster, the owners of the horses applied glue to the backs of the animals in hopes that the Hirtik's feathers would get stuck causing it to not return again. You know, this entire time when you said um, the upper body is a human and the lower body is that of an animal. Yeah. But with feathers. So I kept like imagining like an emu, but with like a human head. So now I'm imagining an emu with a human head trying to ride horses. It looks really funny in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't say like the lower part is what animal. It doesn't say, but you said it has feathers. So I had to imagine something with feathers for my brain. Which animals got feathery legs? Have you guys seen Howl's Moving Castle? Oh yeah, that yeah, that kind of works. You know, Howl has a human face sometimes and has feathery body. Wait, I gotta, I gotta rewatch this. This is gonna sound super nerdy, but I was thinking of like the D&D bird people. I think D&D, some of them are inspired by um, these urban legends. Right, but it's less howl-moving castle, more just a humanoid bird. Oh, do they have feathery legs? Uh, they do have, fe- like, they have, like, the, you know how the, the bird still has, like, a reptilian leg in the lower half at the very least, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, this one, it's still in that shape as it's kind of like the inverted knees and so on but it's feathery instead of skin oh, okay for some reason i think like owl like i think owl person if it's feathery why is it underwater that is a good question <laughs> yeah that's true that makes no sense next we have kamos it is an evil creature seen in the harpet region he collapses with all his weight on people who sleep alone causing them to distort and sometimes die according to the stories this creature wanders around at night is sometimes barley and sometimes dwarf like you know when it said he collapses with all his weight on people who sleep alone i'm imagining like a wrestling move where you know you climb on the corner of the the ring and then you're like yeah that's what i was imagining yeah me too and then you elbow drop him he always carries a turkish hat called a bork on his head it is believed that if a person succeeds in grabbing this hat he will have gold in the size of the bork the person who is pressed by kamos who disguises as a black cat from time to time thinks that his blood is drawn and his veins are dry it is noteworthy that the word kamos resembles the meaning of the word nightmare so kamos disguises as a black cat sometimes apparently all right so it sounds a lot like a, a sleep paralysis demon where he's sitting on your chest and so on yeah sounds like a like a i don't know like a burly version of the tooth fairy where like if you manage to get his hat you get gold so what what the tooth fairy is all about like here if you get if we can get the tooth back from me i'll give you a coin and then you just get into a fist fight with the tooth fairy and you're just like all right who let's see who gets more teeth <laughs> yes 
because because the whole part about them like this this sleep this person who was clearly like you know basically like sat on <laughs> while he was calmly sleeping and had like a mur- murder attempt on him just trying to grab this probably let, let's see let's say in this particular time he showed up as a dwarf like grabbing his borg and then like successfully grabbing it and then the dwarf's like fine you win like let me fill it with gold <laughs> i'm seeing like leprechaun you know similarities get me hat i give you a pot of gold but turkish but 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 if it's if he's a dwarf does his bork shrinks that's a rip i would like a sumo sized whatever this thing is so that he has a sumo sized bork <laughs> bro I'll I'll take the risk of a sumo jumping on me. Yeah, <laughs> you're dead. You, we're gonna be flattened. But the gold though. But the gold though. <laughs> screw it. I'll risk it. <laughs> no, screw that. How about like a normal sized, uh, but burly person? See, but I'm not like that frail. I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll be I'll be freaking roti. Yeah, <laughs> you would. <be. laughs> Damn, you're getting less gold. No, I'll be dead. Like I want to survive with like little gold instead of die with no gold. You think a normal sized person was on your chest and pressing you down, you'd be okay? No, cuz I'm smaller than normal sized. <laughs> yeah. I'm asking for the sumo. Wait, no, but I think I thought they were just going to like jump on me and then like done. Oh, you're dead. Are they going to try to smother me? Not really, but sounds like they just kind of sit there and they're like, "Ha ha, I can't get my hat." Yeah. Oh my god, that's like that's like someone's wrestling move that this really really big big dude. Oh, oh, oh. Uh Rikishi <laughs> just sat on people. Yeah, he just tries to choke people on his butt. Yeah, he would put them in the corner and then just like back up into them. Yeah. Oh, wow. So Rikishi looked at <laughs> looked at some urban legends. This is the move I want to try. Rikishi with the pork. <laughs> This is Rikishi's origin story. Rikishi was a Turkish wrestler. <laughs> so yeah, apparently in the myth, people believe that their veins have been drained too. Yeah. So what? This guy comes around, sits on your lap, sticks an IV in you and starts sucking you dry. <laughs> But the, that's how the human feel, okay? The person who's dying feels like their blood has been drawn out and the veins feel dry, but I don't think it's actually happening. They just feel that. Wait, wait. Also that sentence that part is preceded by it saying Camos uh, like sometimes disguises as a black cat, like sort of like a vampire, you know, their teeth. Oh, that's so adorable, but at the same time. And they're like, "Oh." Imagine like a human sized cat just sitting on your chest that would freak you out <laughs> oh my god no that's terrifying yeah yeah that's like a black panther no 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 like not like panther proportion it's like the same it's just like you clicked on the left corner of a cat and then like dragged you know <laughs> you know what i mean you just yeah click on the top right corner and then just drag it so it's the same proportions as a cat as a house cat and then it's just big last one for this video is the karakura karakura is the name of a cruel evil spirit according to some beliefs this spirit frightens purpurant women who have just given birth and is believed to take their lungs away he triggers fearful nightmares in people children are scared by the name of the karakura in ancient times they grabbed sleeping people and scared them and sometimes scared them to sleep again so is being scared to sleep just like knocked out you know ah faint <laughs> yeah maybe or you know you can just blissfully go to sleep like ah, ah sleep <laughs> <laughs> Then he prevented them from making noises by stopping them from breathing and removing their lungs. Not so blissful now. <laughs> Who really needs lungs, right? <laughs> so wait, wait, what if he got like a smoker's lungs? Would he just be like, "No, nah, no, nah, keep them. These are disgusting." These beings were depicted in the form of creatures that walked calmly and gently like cats. Again with the cats. What are what are the what is wrong with all these murderous cats roaming around in Turkey that they have to make legends about it? 
Turkish people didn't like cats. They wanted an excuse to kill cats, all right? That, that's the thing. I thought Turkey was one of those countries that feed all stray cats. Like, they really like cats. That's, that's, the, that's basically devil worship in Turkey, all right? You feed a cat on the road, you are a Satanist. No. Oh my god, there are a lot. So, I have found about 100 of these urban legends. And a lot of them are also cats. Or they turn into cats. Cats have such a reputation, man. Yeah, cats and bats. Uh, but if you bring it back to like witches and stuff and their familiars, cats were very like, oh yeah, a cat is a witch's pet. Yeah, true. So yeah, you know how like teens rebel, you know, in their teenage years, they go around just feeding cats. Man, Turkish people don't like cats. I love it. I love how Turkish, I love how Turkish people are obsessed with um, murderous cats. Or defaming cats. Aww, that's so sad. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this video. And thank you, Susie, for joining us today. Ah, oh, great to be here. If you like this drawing and you would like to see the finished piece, please check out my Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below which true crime or supernatural case you would like to see next. Or if you have a story of your own you would like to share, you can send them to me to my email or my Instagram. Or on our subreddit, all the links will be in the description down below. Subscribe for more videos like this. And if you're already subscribed, please click the bell to be notified in the future. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Bye.